Hey, how you doing? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another time here. Welcome to another time in the upper room. Another opportunity and privilege to pray. So glad to have you. So glad you came. Uh, we've been doing a study through the book of Proverbs as we lead ourselves in a place of prayer. And we're presently in Proverbs chapter 6. We're in verse 14 of Proverbs chapter 6. And verse 14 reads, it says that... Uh, it says perversity is in his heart. Talking about the, the wicked man, the corrupt man, the fallen man, you know, the the the, the old man, our lower nature. He says perversity is in his heart. He, he devises evil continually. You know, he sows discord. If we can say to ourselves, that's the way we feel. That's a default, our default. That's our default. That's a result of the fall. If you're sincere with yourself, that is the way your heart tends to push you. Let me help you. Jeremiah 17 verse 9 defines it even better. He says the heart is deceitful above all things. The heart is deceitful above all things. The fallen nature, the fallen man is the, the heart of the fallen man is deceitful above all things. You can't trust it. You can't rest on it. The corrupted man, the perverse man, the heart of the perverse man, the twisted man, you know, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. The word wicked is desperately twisted, desperately crooked, desperately out of form, out of shape. Who can know it? That is what we come to the cross with. That's what we come to Calvary with. So Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says that, that we should renew our mind. Our spirit is born again. Uh huh. That there is a mind, our mind has not changed because we got born again, did not erase the computer that we had. Our mind does not change. God does not do that part for us. God bonds again our spirit. It is our job to, to, to redeem our soul. It is our job to renew our mind. It is our job to reprogram our mind. It is our, it's our job to reconfigure our mind. And then I wait for the mind there is the word heart. Mind and heart are close, but they are not exactly the same. Right? But in as far as what we're talking about here is concerned, they, 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 that's where that is the place of their overlap. The mind, the heart, the corrupted mind. Of a falling person. The programming in his mind. The, the, the tendency. The default. The trajectory of the heart. The mind of the falling person. Falling nature. Is desperately wicked. He is desperately wicked. It is deceitful. You rest on it. That, oh have a right. He will take me home. No he ain't going to take you home. He ain't going to take you home. Unless you work on it, unless you set it all right, unless you reconfigure it from the place it has fallen, except you reconfigure it to, 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 to the figuring of the place you are wanting to go, your future is not going to come by chance. It's going to come by choice. The future you want is going to come by choice. You'll have to do something. You'll have to program it, program your mind, program your heart to take you home, to take you to the place you want to go, to take you to the destined position, placing you want to go. If you don't do that, it will not take you home. The Bible says there's a way there's a, that cement right onto man, but the end thereof is a way of death. If you depend on your corrupted mind that you have not walked on, it's not going to take you to the place of life. It might look like all is well, but all is not well. If you have not walked on the default setting of your heart, your mind, all is not well. 
So the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says we should renew our mind. Don't, 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 don't leave your mind at the disposition of the stories, of the corruption, of the of the debt you have you have carried, you have you, that, that has come upon you as, as a part, as a as a part of your passage of time. Reconfigure your beliefs, reconfigure your story. Let it line with the word of God. Let it line with the word of God. Your, the word of God is the sure programming that will take you home. It is our letter from a far place. It is our letter from home. It is our compass to take us home. Let's talk more about that. Let's pray. Pray. Uh, we continue with a study through uh, Proverbs 6. Right? We, we, we're talking about the fact that we need a compass. Just like we need a compass to navigate our way, you know, in a place that we've not been to before, right? We need a compass to navigate our way through life. And that compass is the word of God. You know, our flesh does not know the way to heaven. We ourselves don't know the way to heaven, right? We need a compass. We need somebody to direct us to the place of life, to the part of life. Again, Proverbs says that there's a way that seemeth right unto a person. Unto man, but the hand thereof is the way of death. Because I think it's right doesn't mean it's right. Because I feel it's right doesn't mean it's right. It's only right if the word of God says it is right or it agrees with the word of God. The word of God is our compass through life, it is our default director. When we leave ourselves away, we're, we're sincere to ourselves. Our flesh wants to do some strange things. Some foolish things, some things that we would later regret. It looks okay right now. It is the same flow. It just feels all right. It's gonna make me feel good. But we know ourselves that if we if we see the end of it and look backwards, we'll be ashamed of the thing that would have done. It looks right right now. It seems to fit into the way I feel and the way things are working. But we know the end is a way of death. We know that. But sometimes we close what we know to, to seemingly live in the present as if that there's no tomorrow. <laughs> News flash. There is a tomorrow. There is to die once and then judgment. So part of tomorrow is judgment. So when I stand before God, will I be will will, will, will I be confident or will I be ashamed? Will I be able to look up or oh, my face will be down? Will I will, 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 will I disappoint him or will he rejoice over me? There is a judgment for believers also. Don't let anybody deceive you that once I give my life, there's a judgment for believers. They are deceiving you because they want to sin. Don't follow them to do evil. There is a judgment for believers. There's a judgment for everyone. Just because you are born again doesn't mean that God won't judge you. There is a judgment for everyone. So when in Hebrews, the Bible says it is appointed unto man wants to die and then judgment. It's not just talking about unbelievers. It's talking about everybody. You will give account of the way you live your life. Because you're born against me, you go, you go to heaven. Let them, that's not in the Bible. There's no place in the Bible that because I'm born and go to heaven. Read your Bible. There's no place like that. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Wake up to life so you don't go to hell. Yeah, grown up, read the Bible yourself. Don't 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 believe evil. Don't believe falsehood. Read the Bible. There's no place in the Bible that says because I'm born again, I'll go to heaven. It says when you're born again, you you can see, you can see, not even enter. See, 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 see. Seeing and entering are not the same thing. You will be judged for what you do, not just what Christ did, what you do. What you did with Christ, you'll be judged. Not a one time what you did with Christ, what you did with him, what you are doing with him, what you will do with him, you'll be judged. And part of that judgment can take you to hell. Read your Bible. Walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. You are not free to sin just because you are born again and born again so you can sin. We need the Bible, we need the word to guide us, to direct us. It's not a free flow. 
we must curtail ourselves. We must hold ourselves together to do righteously. Hold ourselves together to live holy. Hold ourselves together to please God. That is what the compass of the word says. So when Jesus was praying in John 17, 7, he says, God, sanctify them, separate them, hold them together, differentiate them, enable them, you know, by your word, by your word, by your word, by your truth, your word is truth, by your word, by your truth, your word is truth. Not a lie, not your feeling, not some funny person that just wants to accumulate and build a big church and will tell you a lie. Read the Bible. It's only the word that will separate you unto God. So read the word. It's only the word that will wash you and cause you to enter into the kingdom, to walk in the kingdom, to get the benefit of the kingdom, even in this life. So John 3, 5 says, except you be born of water, the word, the spirit. You cannot enter into the kingdom. To enter into the kingdom is to be born of the word, of, 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 of the water, the word, and the spirit. Align the word, produce the new life in you, 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 produce the new life in you. Amen. We'll continue tomorrow. God bless you. Have a great remaining of the day. Shalom.